How do you feel, young man? I feel great. Congratulations. Thank you so much. What was the, the anticipation of all day? I was nerve-wracking. You know, all I could think in my head was I just really hope the team still gave me the chance to show the kind of person that I am and that they wouldn't let something like this define my character and all the good that I've done. And, you know, the Broncos traded up five spots and gave me that opportunity. And I'm more than indebted to them, and I can't wait to show them that they made the best decision of this draft. Does it mean even more that they traded up together? Yes, it means even more because they wouldn't let anybody else get the chance later on in the draft to take me. I can't wait to be a different Bronco and learn from guys like DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller and be a part of a championship team. Did you, did you talk, talk to John Elway? this week about what happened Monday, and did you talk to the Broncos about it before yes. tonight? You know, the past 72 hours of my life have been really dark, and it's been a lot of work to me. You know, I haven't really been able to spend time with my family. You know, I've had to be, talk to teams consistently and explain to them that this one mistake doesn't define my character. This one mistake isn't going to change who I am, and I'm not a person who has character issues. And so it just took one team to pull the trigger and give me the chance. And a lot of teams passed on me, and I feel that because the Broncos took that chance, that with the Broncos, I will let all those teams know that they made the hugest mistakes at this draft. What did you learn? Learned not to put myself in bad situations. You know, I had some someone close to me, you know, influence me, and, and I made the decision myself. And I had to learn from that. I had to grow from that as a man. I accepted full responsibility for what happened, and I didn't run from it. I still came here to Chicago. I still faced all the media, and that says so much about who I am as a person and my character. And the Broncos saw that. And now, for the Broncos, I'm going to dominate everybody that we play. Shane, is this almost a good thing to get that out of your out of your way in the 72-hour window, as you mentioned, and now put it behind you, move forward, and play pro football. Definitely, because you know it's all about timing, and the timing of my incident was terrible. You know, some guys who've had serious character issues have had time to clarify themselves to the teams and let them know that they weren't going to make a mistake. But because mine happened this week, it, quest, it was a huge question on my judgment and who I am as a person. And I wouldn't allow teams to have that idea in their mind that I'm a bad person or I make, I'm going to continue to make bad decisions because I'm not. I learned from my mistake, and as a man, I'm growing from this, and I just can't wait to put on this Broncos jersey because they're the team that gave me the chance. Did you have an opportunity to clear anything up with them before they drafted you so that they yes. know we're getting the right guy? Oh, yes. I spoke to the Broncos, and I let them know exactly what happened. They understood my situation. They understood that I make a mistake, and nobody's perfect, and they they giving me the chance. they put me next to Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware, two guys that I can learn from and become a great pro, and I can't wait. It's, it's a small setback for a great comeback. In a way, probably the best situation for you to go to Denver. You feel this is the right fit? Definitely. I mean, the defense that they run and what I've been watching Von Miller do in it, I feel like I'm more than capable of doing that as well and just bringing a, a whole other level of pass rush. I mean, you have us three on the field at one time, we're going to tear quarterbacks apart. I, I'm so excited. We can hear it in your voice, the energy and the excitement you have to go there. Tell the people of Denver what they're getting every Sunday. Oh, every Sunday you're getting a, a ferocious pass rusher. Not just a pass rusher, but a ferocious athlete who's going to attack people in the run game. Dropping in the coverage is no issue, but more so when you want somebody to go get the quarterback and get the ball back and Peyton Manning's hands, I will be one of those guys you'll hear name called on Sundays. There's, there's one way of dealing with things that's kind of like racing a joke. Is that your personality? Because you know people are going to make the... Oh, you know, the Denver, oh, jokes, right? you know I, of course I understand that, but what people also need to understand was weed was never an issue for me. I never had an issue in college with weed. I had one issue in my freshman year, and besides that, I've been clean. I haven't had any issues. So for them to have that judgment of me and my character, even in the situation that happened Monday, I was not under the influence. And that's something that people fail to realize. And so with that being said, the issue with Denver having weed legalized is not something that concerns me at all. My concern is being the best football player that I can be, and I'm going to do that. So it's not a character problem, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. Mistake. And people need to understand that everyone makes mistakes. I made a mistake that cost me. But even more so, I learned from my mistake and somebody gave me a chance. I don't have character issues. What you see on Draft Academy, what you see on TV, that is who I am. I'm not somebody who fabricates who I am. I made a mistake and I learned from it. And now, as a Denver Bronco, I'm going to show them that 